excerpt was taken from the Full and Bloom interview with producer-engineer Tony Platt. You can listen to the entire interview at fullandbloom.com. Am I right in saying that you met Mutt Lang at Roundhouse Studios during the recording of ACDC's Highway to Hell? Um, yeah, basically I was introduced to Mutt uh, by a mutual friend, a guy called Adam Seif. Mutt had mentioned to Adam that he was getting ready to mix the ACDC album and he wanted to get this kind of real solid English rock sound to it and Adam said oh I'll tell you the guy that you should get is Tony because he worked at Islands Basing Street Studios on Free, Mop the Hoople and stuff like that so he's very much aware of what that sound is all about so then I got invited to go down to the session at Roundhouse and just meet everybody and basically got hired. Do you recall anything about your first impression of Mutt? Oddly enough I'd actually met him sometime earlier than that, probably a couple of years earlier than that, because this same mutual friend, Adam, he had a small studio down on the south coast of England, and I used to do quite a lot of engineering there, and Mutt was kind of the um, house producer for Polygram Records at the time, and he brought an artist down there called Red Hot, I think it was, something he was producing, and he didn't want anybody to engineer the session for him. He wanted to do the whole thing himself, so I just kind of got him going on the session and then left him to it for the day with the assistant. So we'd sort of crossed paths once before, and all I really knew about him was that he worked a long hours... <laughs> because he certainly did on that those particular sessions. So it wasn't the first time of meeting him. He's a really cool guy. He's a very nice person, so it wasn't difficult to get on with. Um, and the rest of the guy is very, very friendly. Bond was the most friendly. I mean, I'd only been in the room about five minutes, and Bond was, well, you want a cup of tea? And so he went and made me a cup of tea, and I just kind of sat around chatting to everybody. I know you were faced with some challenges on mixing that record, and one being, uh, I think you had told them that next time due to how Mutt recorded with the separation of things that he should add some ambience later. Could you explain how you would do that? Well, it was a technique that I'd used on a number of occasions, actually. It was just simply, I just wanted to have some sound from each of the microphones or each of the instruments bleeding onto the other instruments. So it's something that I can normally call it ambient glue. It's what makes up the spaces between the instruments and what helps to stick it together. So it's pretty simple really um, you just choose certain microphones and you feed them through into a pretty hefty set of speakers in the recording room and then put a couple of microphones up and then feed that back into the mix it's not that dissimilar from adding reverb or um, chambers but it's under a slightly more controlled situation and of course it's a lot drier than it would be with a chamber where you're actually encouraging the chamber or the echo plate to be much more reverberative and resonant what you're doing here is you're just really adding the sound of the room to the other sounds of the instruments. On Back in Black, I put up ambience microphones, and on Back in Black, we recorded more of the instrumentation um, at the same time than was the case on Highway to Hell. A lot of the things on Highway to Hell were, were overdubbed single instruments, whereas on Back in Black, all the songs were recorded with two guitars, bass and drums live in the studio at the same time. Was the band involved in the mix of that album, or was it just you and Mutt? Um, they were in town when we were mixing it, um, and they basically they would just kind of drop by at some point during the day. It was most of the time it was just Mutt and me mixing and they would just come down and, and check out what we've been doing how much of the sessions were you there for on highway to hell i was the only the mixing i mean we did there was still some uh, there were a couple of vocals still to finish off um i think beating around the bush was one of them so we had to do those i think there was a little bit of solo guitar that needed to be uh, dropped in on one of the songs but the rest of the time it was just the mixing i think we mixed it in probably eight ten days or something like that so i was really only around for that part of the whole thing with i would help and does anything kind of stand out other than what we've talked about um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I had a great time doing it. It was very much my kind of music. I still, to this day, think that A Touch Too Much is probably one of the most underrated singles of all time. I thought that was going to be massive, but um, 
sadly it wasn't but yeah it was just it was a lot of fun it was great it fitted you know it's it's kind of it sounds a little bit arrogant but I, having worked all those years at um at Basing Street Studios, I was kind of used to all the bands that came in or all the artists that came in were really good. So I was used to being exposed to great bands, great songs, great musicians and so on. And, and ACDC kind of fitted into that pattern of things. Two. 